It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil on this Friday, episode 174. Friday, August, <laughs> so weird, August 18th. Hey, happy birthday, Jill. <laughs> uh, we're going to see her in about a week. That's fantastic. Uh, happy birthday, Jill. Happy Friday, Shelly. It's wine time. Oh, it was good. I liked it. Uh, so um, today we uh, hope that you don't hear a whole bunch of noise. I'll tell you, man, we're out of rhythm. <laughs> we're, we're out of rhythm on our recording without guests. Mm-hmm. It's taken yeah, me like because a... we pre-recorded several episodes. Yeah, time. but I mean, it's... Skipped a couple of weeks. Yeah, I had to figure this out. Anyway, um, my ears are still ringing. What? Uh, it's, we tell our dog. I should, we don't even have to tell her. We're going to go take her for a W-A-L-K. We can't even say it because she's in the same room. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, like she, she sees Shelly sit on the floor, start putting her shoes on. She's like, and makes these ear-piercing <laughs> screeches. And you so, think somebody was killing her. Right. I actually thought that might be the case. Shelly, um, while I'm pouring, I am going to tell you a little story. I probably poured a little much. I'm sorry. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. My bad. Um, what I did pour, no, I'm not even going to say it yet. Shelly, in 1972, General Ele- and this is from a post in Wine Enthusiast, okay, the, the magazine. In 1972, General Electric engineers Jim Holmes and John Williams decided to invest in a piece of property. They had tried the stock market. Miserable failures. There was... No road here, and there was no signs. And I come to find out there's no water, no power either. Not okay? yet. Yeah. There was nothing. But they it's went. Like a desert. Yeah. Full of it sagebrush. By the way, there's there's terroir in the sage. Anyway, I get it. I'm getting ahead of myself. There was nothing, but they went ahead anyway and planted a few vines. In 1975, both of these guys planted a 12-acre parcel with Riesling, Chardonnay, and Cabernet Sauvignon. And they planted the Cabernet Sauvignon because they liked it, not because they thought it was gonna succeed. They were told, what are you doing? No one thought red wine grapes had a chance in those days. Most areas of Washington were believed to be too cold and the growing season too short to ripen the red wine grapes, especially the heat-loving Cabernet Sauvignon. These guys said, I don't care. They did it anyway. They named their vineyard Kiona, which is our first wine today, is a Kiona concrete semion. There's a rainstorm coming. (laughs) Clear skies. Uh, Kiona, uh, the name is an indigenous indigenous name for the region that translates to brown hills which this was brown hills and in 1980 they founded their very first winery the very first winery on red mountain kiona now let's just toast it up to health wealth and abundance gratitude romance peace on earth and the first winery on red mountain kiona and peace on earth, and peace on earth. you said that I did again? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. You forgot one of He's really out of sorts. <laughs> Not like last week. Oh my gosh. Last week we had Ashley Trout. Oh my mm. goodness. He was really, really out of sorts then. This is nice. Very nice. Um, mm. Over the last four decades, Red Mountain has now established itself as not only Washington's premier wine-growing region, but one of the finest in the world. 
Once a well-kept secret, the recent boom in plantings and investments have served and noticed Red Mountain has arrived, and <laughs> so it has, including our a little podcast. This is the third, sec second Red Mountain wine we featured this month on uh, Washington Wine Month. Mm -hmm. The first was Fidelitas. Then we went to a Walla Walla wine uh, winery in uh, Brook and Bowl. And next week we're going to have Frechette, also Red Mountain. Right. You and I have had a crash course in Red Mountain. Yeah, we have. Yeah, it's fun. One of the interesting things about them is that they had to dig a well, like you said. There was no water. There. Yeah. And so they hired some guy um, who was used to turning, digging salt wells. And they had studied, because they're engineers, um, they thought the water would be at 550 feet. How how'd they know? I don't know. But this guy was digging and digging, and they went out to the area when they thought he would probably be that low. And the guy said, we're at 545 feet, and there's no water. And he's like, boy, there's not any water out here. And they just said, all right, just keep digging. And so they hit water five feet deeper than that. Oh, my gosh. Five feet past that? Yep, 550 feet. Gosh. What is there a saying about? Yes, there is. Yeah. When you don't think, quit. don't quit. That's right. And by the way, these two guys are the epitome of not quitting. We we all have been told something's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And these guys were, were no different. But they, they also were told that this is prime winery real estate or vineyard real estate. For white. Well, for white. And then they realized, actually, they could do red. Today, as of this recording... 90% of the wines that are coming out of Red Mountain are red red, red, uh, red wine. Red grape. Yeah, because you can make more money with red grapes. So if you find a place where they'll grow, it's probably in your best financial interest to go red. Although, Kayana does grow some whites, eight, I think. Well, I think eight this white is... Bridal. Is this not an estate? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there are more than just the two. Oh, sure, sure. Sure. Uh, do you have some notes on this, uh, Semillon? I do. It is aged in concrete. So, um, let's see, concrete Semillon. Um, go ahead and talk. Well, I here's what I am going to say. <laughs> we're going to start with our wine word of the week. Elsom Sellers Wine Word of the Week. Yes. I, I figured you were going there. <laughs> concrete tank. Yeah. So... so a concrete tank in winemaking, and by the way, I've had to change this. Your notes don't reflect this. I've changed it because there is a word called... Did you have to go around trying to find what minifying is? Yes, it's exactly <laughs> it. I'm like trying to find what minifying is. All it means is, is to keep it at a stable temperature. Well, all the all the definitions I found was to... It's a good take, insulator. Concrete yeah, is a good insulator. It's an outstanding insulator. So I, I, ended, up, so I ended up changing the the... I found a different definition. Um, a concrete tank in winemaking refers to a large vessel made of concrete, obviously, that is used for various stages of the winemaking pro process, particularly fermentation and sometimes aging. And these tanks are specifically designed for use in the production of wine and offer unique characteristics that can influence the wine's development. But it doesn't taint the wine development. It's very neutral. It's like stainless steel. So I started doing a little digging I'm on sure it. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of rock tasting in the wine. One would something. think, but they do seal in, in the inside with a mm -hmm. uh, like a food um, type of sealant. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, food appropriate. I forget what that's called. Anyway. <laughs> but food grade. Food grade, thank you. Minifying is also used in coding. <laughs> Not C O A. Yeah, I know. But C O D I N G. Yeah, and so I like. Like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> it won't go there. <laughs> what the hell? We have to. It's tradition now. <laughs> I have, every time it's we a, can say that now. It's a real <laughs> on Instagram. I look it up, it's a cat. The original one was a child. He kept going, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> and her mother's going, don't say that. And its tradition now comes from Monk, from uh, Sarah Silverman. By the way, we've um, already referred that uh, in the past, so um, find that episode. But 
Apparently, I like this. <laughs> it's, it's not tasting to me like Semyon. <laughs> oh, I and am that getting... may be why I like it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Because Semyon for you really is like a, a little um, over acidic. No, yeah. not over acidic. There's something odd about Semyon to me. Well, this I... one, I'm not getting that in this one. Maybe like moldy fruit. <laughs> I kind of get in some Semyon. Well, this is 100% Red Mountain AVA, 100% estate grown and bottled. 2022. Uh, 2022, yep. Oh, I, did, I, did I say the year? Or maybe I didn't. I, I mean to when I hold it up. Yeah. Oh, I, I did say it was a... I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. Will you? <laughs> oh, you're, I love you, Shelly. So... <laughs> um, Anyway, this is fantastic. Uh, all of these wines are very unique. Um, maybe the last one, I don't know if that's necessarily unique. Uh, uh, so they say the concrete tank emphasizes zip and freshness. Yeah. This is a good patio wine. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, there's some things about concrete tanks. Now there's a difference between a concrete tank and a concrete egg, okay? Um, and I will tell you, uh, obviously the shape, but the porosity also. Uh, concrete tanks are more porous than the concrete eggs. Um, lining, concrete tanks are often lined with food grade epoxy. That's um, it. To make them more neutral. Is that food grade epoxy? They are, apparently. Odd. And to prevent contamination. Concrete eggs are not typically lined as the porous nature of the concrete is seen as a beneficial for winemaking. Honestly, the concrete eggs are less money than the concrete tanks. Kind of makes sense. Those concrete tanks are huge. And the concrete eggs are not that cute. Nope, they're not. Uh, they're cuter than crap, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's the cost. Yeah, concrete tanks are typically more expensive um, because they're larger and more complex to manufacture, which seems like the egg would be more complex, but that's me. Uh, so, yeah, you've got the porosity, neutrality, aesthetics. I'm not sure aesthetics qualifies um i would think a wine barrel to me has yeah. more, I, the, the concrete egg to me is the That's most <laughs> aesthetically pleasing uh durability is a good one now we're not really comparing these which tanks. is more durable uh or just uh it, concrete tanks over like um stainless oh, yeah or barrels mm -hmm. yeah um but these are often more cost effective than other types of tanks such as stainless steel, which is interesting. Stainless steel is very expensive. And I don't know how long they'll last. Concrete tanks could go a whole long time. So you're gonna amortize those costs mm -hmm. a little bit. So that's the Semion. Shelly, that's really good. It is. Oh, want to drink it, Yeah, <laughs> I could. I feel like I wanna toast it up again the next one, give you your fair share of I want to. I scared up big time. Hmm. Delicious. It really is good. This is fantastic. Twenty-two bucks at the winery, and we are now having the day of San Giovese. Ooh, we like that. Twenty twenty-two, also from the Cayona Estate Vineyard. No, no, leave it there. Listen to this. Now it's pouring. <laughs> it's thunder and lightning and pouring. Oh, you don't get that from those lapel mics. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, what did you say? 2022? Kind of a state vineyard. So, um, San Giovese is a red wine grape. It's also, you find it in Chianti in Italy. And it's generally lighter because it's made to be paired with food. And it doesn't overshadow the fruit. So um, they do rosé destined rose in their vineyard. So certain rows are destined to be rosé. So they farm these at a higher yield, resulting in more acid and less color con concentration. So they kind of do the same thing as they would with a white grape. Look at how light this is if you're on YouTube watching. Look at how light that is. <laughs> 
is very yeah, light. I'm looking, first of all, um, the uh, alcohol by volume on that Semillon is 12.2, very and nice that, number. And this? 12.3, very nice number. So I'm trying to find out how long they were on the skins. Okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, you do such a better job of reading quickly. Um, anyway, to health, wealth, and abundance, gratitude, romance, and... Peace and love. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I feel better. Oh my Just God. Just the first minute. <laughs> <laughs> A little fizzy. Mmm. Nice. This actually seems like it's got a little residual sugar. Now I'm super wondering about that. Sweeter? It's just saying? a little bit. It's got a little bit of sweetness. Now maybe that's the fruit talking. Um, mm -hmm. This is also 100% Red Mountain, AVA, and 100% estate grown. And so it is Rosé of San Giovese, $25 at the winery. How much was the Semillon? 22. Mm -hmm. be, oh, I already put the cork in. Oh, almost lost that cork. Uh, okay, so uh, this has got some notes that are typical of, uh, first of all, we both love Rosé of Sangiovese from Washington. Right. I don't think I've had a Rosé of Sangiovese from, from, from Red Mountain. Oh, from Red Mountain. Yeah. And so um, this is this is really delicious. Um, I, I made mention about sagebrush. Mm -hmm. Doing some research um, on this episode, uh, it's like that terroir that's only unique of the ABA, which is you know. That's what that's, any terroir. That's right. It's unique and certain. Unique. And so this has got this subtle little sagebrush. Aspect, I'm, I'm told through. I'm not doing anything. Oh, I couldn't identify it even, even if I wanted to. We had sage in the garden. Go smell it. You have a sage brush. <laughs> it smells somewhat similar. My dad's allergic to it. Still? <laughs> That's not funny. It's not, but you said it present tense. <laughs> He's still allergic. Okay. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is this is also very good. Um, a lot of Kiona wines you can find in the stores. Um, I don't recall seeing any of these that we're going to be tasting tonight in the Anyone? stores. Yeah. So I know they're Cabernet Sauvignon, I think for sure, and there's Red Blend. I know that they have in the stores. And we've always been big fans of Kiona. No, the, the first winery in Red Mountain. Yeah. That's amazing. So, very good. Uh, today is actually National Pinot Noir Day. Mm -hmm. I debated pulling out a Pinot. I'm glad you didn't because four wines here. There's four wines, and, and one of those wines. And we have to go somewhere after this. And we do have to go somewhere after this. Uh, so, anyway, um, when we come back, do we need to talk any more about this other than that it's really good? Perfect. So when we come back, we are going to get into some reds. Welcome back to Lion. Uh, welcome back to Lion Wine Wine, Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil. Week three, part three of Washington Wine Month started with Fidelitas, and then we had Brook and Bowl, and now we're on Kiona. And we just got through tasting through a 2022 uh, Kiona Concrete Semillon, $22 also at the winery, and a 2022. Kiona Rosé of San Giovese, 25 bucks at the winery. And we have just opened, as you've heard, a Kiona Pinot Noir. What is lem what? <laughs> Lemberger. Lemberger. And we're not talking about the cheese. No. The Lemberger is kind of great. Can I have your red wine glass, please? 
and I'm going to go a better pour this time. Sorry. Yes. Yep. This is, like we said, a 2021 Kiona. That was weird. Uh, Kiona Pinot Noir Lemberger, and we have been dutifully trying to. What is this over there? Find out the percentages. But before we look too hard, let's go ahead and say hashtag. Cheers, me. Cheers, me. This smells delicious. It does. Such an interesting blend. I don't know what it is, but I don't know what it's kind of is. The color on this. Oh my gosh. That is delicious. That is really good. The lamb burger, you can make two different ways. You can, it can be dry or sweet. No, it can be strong, reminiscent of oh Italian from the Zinfandel, or oh. it can be, it's not really like it's made but grown. Or it can be more lighter, uh, like a Pinot Noir. So, therefore, when you mix it with a Pinot Noir, that makes sense. So, I would say this is probably not California Zinfandel stuff. So. This is, this is really extraordinary. I would say this is phenomenal, do, 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 in my opinion, in my opinion. Uh, the Pinot Noir that is in here is not grown on Red Mountain. No, they traded. Yep. Hmm. That's so cute. Well. They um, traded with a winery in Oregon, Bjornsson Estate, J-O-R, and S-O-N Estate. I called Savannah at Kiona Tasting Room. Oh, nice. I'm like, um, we're doing this episode featuring your wines. I need to know, is it pronounced Eola Amity Hills AVA in Oregon? She's like, exactly. Eola Amity. Mm -hmm. It's almost ran into one, but it's two. It's Eola and Amity, but it kind of pronounced Eola Amity. It's Anyway, uh, so I nailed it the first time. Not that you have to believe me. But my goodness, this is really you should good. Have asked with that combination. Now. Well, I didn't know at the time it wasn't on here. Uh -huh. It does say seventy-five percent of that vineyard Pinot Noir. Um, so I'm assuming it's seventy-five percent Pinot Noir, and then twenty-four uh, Lemberger and one percent Kiona Estate Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, there you go. It was right good. there in front of your face. Well, I'm <laughs> still learning how to read. Be nice. Forty-three percent new oak, new French oak for eighteen months, and it is thirteen point seven percent alcohol, so it's not that big. Sort of like a Pinot Noir. Shelly, this is really good. You like it? I do like it. Did I show the camera? I think so. Okay. Just in case I didn't. There we go. It's a nice label too. It's got a crab on it. Well, that's kind of fun when you trade with another state because you can't really grow Pinot Noir in um, Red Mountain. It's much too hot. Yeah, and so when they said uh, you're what not going to said you couldn't exactly grow Cabernet, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, some things are true, <laughs> and uh, it, where it, it it looks like the heat. At Red Mountain, in Red Mountain is perfect for Cabernet Sauvignon and the bigger, you know, reds. Pinot would not do well there. So, um, God, this is really good. I'm sorry. I, this this is one of the better wines I've had in a while. Um, oh. We gotta allow time for um, us to go through all the wines that we've had this week, which is really the last three weeks. <laughs> Right. So it's a little extensive. Okay. So we have not had these wines all in one week. Just know that. We did have 30 wine bottles at the brewery. Well, that's <laughs> a great segue because this has been a very, very busy month, you know, and summer so far. Mm -hmm. We have had, well, we had Amanda Robinson visit us. Mm -hmm. We may have had a couple of bottles of wine that night. <laughs> we may have. Uh, that was a lot of fun. When she passes through, she tries to stop by. I think a lot of it, you know, the wine and you. 
That's certainly not me. And yeah. so, <laughs> and she brought her dog again, small dog. Small dog. And, His name is small dog. And not a small dog. It's certainly not as small as Lucy. Lucy, who is not socially um, trusted, <laughs> trusted socially, did great. Mm -hmm. After a while. Yeah, I actually tried to play. So anyway, thanks Amanda for coming by. We um, were a part of the Business Zone opening mm -hmm. where I got to uh, co MC with Stan Tebow. Mm -hmm. And we had CDA Gourmet, who's on this episode as a sponsor. A sponsor. Our very first time of having them on as a full sponsor. We're so happy. Uh, I'm going to say this right now because last week we, we had a... Uh, well, Matt and Brenda are in Seattle right now. So mm -hmm. last week we had a little farewell party. Not farewell as in forever, but a farewell because Matt's going to have a bone marrow transplant. It's like a four-month ordeal. Yes. Okay? They just started CDA Gourmet. Anyone listening? And then found out. Yeah. And, and, and they, he has leukemia. So, so they, good for them. they followed through and they, they're like, we're going to make this work. So, I, man, that is not easy to do. So kudos, kudos for that. But if you want to help at all, go and visit CDA Gourmet. Mm -hmm. and, and add them to your prayers. And add them to your prayers. Probably not add them to your prayers and then go to <laughs> CDA Gourmet. But honestly, uh, they're semi-concerned how that store is going to run. It's brand new. I mean, it's three months open now. Mm -hmm. And so two and a half uh, months. Are we, are we going to be able to make this work? And so it's a great store and we can't talk enough about it really, but we don't have the time to talk about it like we'd like to. Right. Anyway. If you love kitchen gadgets and anything having to do with good cooking, go see them. Yep. Gadgets is right. And then we got to see Jenny and David Samara, which they're always fun. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, David turned us on a lot. Uh, 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 turned us on to a lot of wineries in Red Mountain. One is Frechette and one is uh, Fidelitas. Mm -hmm. So thank you, David, for that. We also saw uh, Paul and Victoria were there and um, other people, I can't remember their names right now. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. Um, and then we had the Brewery Olympics and we're running behind, so we had some well, we, Footloose. We, okay. We did see Footloose and what, the last weekend right now, so we saw Pride and Prejudice last week. Okay. It was fantastic, and it's actually very funny. It's a comedy. And it was a musical, but <laughs> mostly musical. It, it was very funny. It was very funny. <laughs> there are some characters that are outstanding. Uh, anyway, uh, last weekend is this weekend. If yeah. you... Man, You're in the area. Trying to seriously, people. ticket prices are decent, and the and the, per, the production That's is amazing. outstanding. Yeah. Uh, what else did we do? We... Da, 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 da. Okay. Um Let's uh, get on to the next wine. Oh, oh. Right, so uh, I need to dump that. No, no that, we don't have to dump that. No, that's a white that wine glass. Wine. That's and, a white wine glass. And then I'll put this in here, and then I'll have. Okay, this is so very complicated. You can you can see uh, just how complicated it is on our YouTube channel. Last week, those that watched the YouTube channel I missed about that. 15 minutes of it because Phil forgot to hit record on the Zoom. Ah, so stupid. Good job. Wow, that is really good. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with that. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the... Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. Um, uh, well, let's just open this right now. Here we let's go. talk about the first Red Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh. From Kayona is sold to Rob Griffin of Preston Winery, which he is now at Bernard Griffin. Barnard Griffin. Barnard Griffin because he's oh, a Griffin. That is dark. So that's the first time um, that he saw the great potential for red. So 1978. I wonder how many people. That's a long time ago. It is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how many. And then 1980 was the first Kayona wine, the first commercial Lemberger in the U.S. Yeah. We have a friend of ours loves Lemberger. They should people should make more Lemberger. I think. Look how dark this is. Uh, this is a twenty. 
sorry. This is not a number. A 2018 Kiona Heart of the Hill Carmenier, sixty dollars at the winery. Keep it Yep. It's pretty. Let's see if I put this in the, with the back. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah. Hashtag. Today. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be great too. <laughs> wow. We love Carmenieres also. Carmenieres yes. are actually one of the Bordeaux blends, but not used a lot. But they can be. One of the Bordeaux oh. varietals that can be used in a oh, Bordeaux in a blend. Bordeaux. Yeah. Is um, that long? Oh man, that oh why? So this is five years old. Wow, yeah. Yeah, let me just double check on that. It sure can. Not huge, but no. It still could be aged up. I would say these are soft tannins. Yep, 2018. How about that? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, you know, we have, we, you know, we have our varietals that off the beaten path stuff that we really, truly love. And Carmenere is one of them. Uh, this is fantastic. You got some info on this? This is only the second Carmenere release under their label. The first one was from the 2012 vintage, so they don't do this one often. I wonder if they blend it with other things. They do. 93% Carmenere, 7% Cabernet Sauvignon. No, I didn't. Since there's oh, such oh, a I long see. time between, do yeah. they use it to, in their other blends? Interesting. Uh, I, I would think so, but maybe not. I, I just don't get why more uh, wineries, especially around areas where they're growing Carmenere, why not actually put together a Bordeaux blend, including Carmenere? Right, so this Carmenere is a little tricky in that you have to let it ripen. Um, so if you don't, you're going to get kind of a um, vegetal green kind of taste in it. So I'm looking for the I alcohol on the Pinot and the Limburger. The Pinot was 13 minutes. Okay, did you have it? I said it. Okay, good. Uh, and this one? 15. Or? Now that's the Washington Reds we're used to. <laughs> 15%. Holy moly. Um, I'm going to take some time sipping this and while i'm doing that we're going to listen to one, uh, a couple more sponsors and then we're going to wrap up okay okay, okay. Don't scare the poor dog. <laughs> That's staying on. It's well, okay, Lucy. It's okay. Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays, where this is a family affair. Speaking of family affair, Kiona is a family affair. They're yes. the, the dad that um, started that. Now, so John Williams and Jim Holmes started. Um, is that Doctor Kroger saying a song about John Williams? John Henry. Oh, John Henry. <laughs> Henry was a little baby. Then John Henry. Uh, oh, see, what can't believe I said okay. that. So in, in 1994, the Williams family purchased um, the Holmes portion of Kayana. Oh, so it's... So now it's just the Williams family. Yeah, um, Tyler is involved and JJ is involved. I think JJ is the business side. Tyler... The general manager. Tyler is the winemaker. Yep. This is a cute quote they say. It's not a Kiona party until the graduated cylinders come out. <laughs> so the if you graduated ever cylinders. If you ever took chemistry in high school, you know, or college, you know what a graduated cylinder is. Oh, well. It's like a glass cylinder, and it's got little markings, like, you know, 30 cc's, 60 cc's. Oh, so at their Kiona so they're parties, they're, making, they're blending right then. <laughs> right. Oh, we need to make one of those. No, I, not we the blending to... cylinder. We need to make one of those parties. Uh, oh, yeah. That would be oh, fun. man, that would be fun. Should probably uh, get a hold of them. Uh, if they're listening to this. Oh, and another cute story about it Tyler. It is time for wine at gmail.com. Let's do it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> another cute story about Tyler. My son is named Tyler, and Tyler's apparently are cute and smart. <laughs> so in second grade, um, they were 
you know how classes do a, a lesson on apples and senses. So in second grade, in second grade, Tyler said, "This apple juice tastes like Chardonnay." Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> awesome! So what, how teacher, old? How second grade, like how, seven? Seven. Okay, so the teacher was a little what? <laughs> Tyler said he's been working at Kiona since he was seven. Uh, <laughs> but he's only recently worked there full time oh, okay. um, because actually he uh, would take these twice a year. He would cross the equator is what he said. So he'd try to catch two harvests in one year oh. and work with multiple winery, um, winemakers and learn things from them. I, I mean, it's a fantastic idea. Talk about not getting pigeonholed or painting yourself in the corner in one way of winemaking. You're learning all sorts. Terrific. That's, um, it, that's pretty good. Sometime um, I'll tell you what my son said. It has to do with the seven dwarfs. <laughs> you can't right now? No, it's a long story. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not going to be together. Well, actually, the, the next time you and I are without a guest, I think we're going to be in the fine country of Canada. Canada, eh? <laughs> B. Uh, C-A-N-A-D-A? Yes. <laughs> oh, Shelly's getting giddy. Okay, so uh, do we want to talk about food pairings at all? I mean, it's pretty standard on these. I think maybe that semion might be a little tricky and maybe the penal Lemberger. Yeah, let's not because I don't really know. Okay, let's not. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... Semillon's going to go with seafood. The Lemberger penal is going to pair more with what Pinot pair with because that's the style of thing or the way they... I don't know exactly if the growing of the style, but yeah. yeah. It's a little heavier. Um, the best carbonara is big. It's probably going to go with red meats and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose, wheat, the milk, no. Exactly. <laughs> Everything. So, <laughs> wines we enjoyed this week. Derek Rolfe's uh, Wiley Vineyard Pinot Noir. That was from uh, Naked Wines. We had the McGrail Chardonnay from the Gary V Wine Club, which Shelley didn't really like at all. I happen to like it. It's just a style difference. The, okay, can you pronounce this next one? Two Boy Coa. Two Boy Coa? Yeah, that's actually on the label. That was a rosé you got from the Culinary Stone. It's a Malbec rosé. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Owl Block Reserve Chardonnay. Go up to Grocery Outlet. <laughs> and for $6, you get a pretty good Reserve Chardonnay. And it's a little on the oak side. Yeah, it is. A little, little. Not yeah, little. it's not over the top. Uh, we also have its exposed Cabernet Sauvignon. That was also Naked Wines. F. Stephen Miller Black Label Old Vine Zinfandel. That was Naked Wines. Seven Cellars Pinot Noir. That was really good. I really like that Pinot they make. Uh, Revora Cabernet Sauvignon. Elson Cellars and Eternal Wine oh, Albarinos. Yeah. And they were really interesting, the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. They were different. Both Washington Albarinos. Uh, Pfeiffer Wines, the Hero Shiraz. Uh, Roblar Chardonnay, another one from Grocery Outlet that we've put our stamp of approval on. not Pepper Oakey. Nope. Bodegas. Like Pepper Oakey. Echoing? No, yeah, a little bit. I don't know why, because it's one mic. Uh, Bodegas Care Garnacha Nativa Vinas Viejas. Oh. Yeah. It's and an old vine garnacha. It was good. It's also for a good cause. A Barrios Petit Bordeaux. Again, you did not like that. I thought it was okay. I don't um, like Padrillos Malbec. So there rounds out at the 30 wines. And half of those bottles was they were at the Brewery Olympics. Uh, coming up, National Wine Day, August 28th. International Cabernet Sauvignon Day, August 30th. It's always a Thursday before Labor Day. National Chianti Day. I think we're going to open a Chianti from Monday. Yeah, go get a Chianti so you can taste it. Yeah, not only that, and, and maybe get a Sangiovese from a Cal California or Washington that you can compare the two. Mm -hmm. International Grenache Day, this September 15th. Orange Wine Day. We're getting an orange wine. Mm -hmm. Yes, or two. Yep. And we do have Wine is Life music series with Barry Aiken coming up. What to expect next week? No echo. <laughs> <laughs> and we are wrapping up Washington Wine Month with Shay Frechette. Yes. 
winemaker. Winemaker at the Chef Winery. Yes. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you to today's sponsors. Who are they, Shelly? Studio 107, Rivara, J. Brook Walter Wines, and CBA Gourmet. Matt, hang in there. We're with you. And with a little bit of knowledge, life, no. With a little bit of knowledge, wine becomes a lot less overwhelming. Have an awesome weekend. Thanks for being here. I She's grabbing know. her bell, and we're out. Bye-bye. Thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with Shelly and Phil. Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance.